Welcome back, everybody. We're done talking about basketball in Maryland. Time to talk about the head open. And one team that has been turning it on in recent weeks, I think it's fair to say, is Sussex Tech. And tonight, well, they welcomed in Bennett with some interstate action. Yep. That's right. Tech has actually won six of their last eight coming into tonight. Their losses only coming to Smyrna <laughs> and Dover, so maybe they deserve yeah. some more respect from us yeah. on the desk here. It but happens. Bennett and Sussex <laughs> Tech. <Especially> Dover. <laughs> They're meeting in Georgetown tonight. Kevin Custis from downtown, and down it goes for him. Give him all three of those. And then the Clippers matching blows with the Ravens. Dorian Davis going to connect from the line right here. Ooh, Bennett going to cool. turn some defense into offense here. Jordan Williams with the rejection right there. Oh. DJ Bellin going to bring it up, and he okay. finds Corey Smith underneath for the easy lay-in right there. But now the Ravens up nine looking for more. Here's Custis again all alone. Give him all three of these right here, and the Ravens threatening to blow this one out. Yeah, Sussex Tech continued their hot shooting in the second half. Cameron Daniels here on the baseline. Nobody going to guard me. Okay, that's an easy two points. Now, Bennett, give him credit. They keep fighting on this Friday night. They come up with the loose ball here. Bellin going all the way, taking it past the defender, throwing up a floater. Somehow that, that <laughs> went in. Didn't call bank, but it went in. All right, Kevin mm -hmm. Custis. The star of the night, like I thought he would be. 38 points. Tech takes this one huge. 84 to 57. Throughout the course of the season, us being able to get some transition, easy transition baskets uh, enables our guys to be able to come down and get, you know, and knock some shots down. It's tough in high school to be able to play three games in a week, and so we wanted to come out and, and exert some energy to see if we could sort of wear them down with our pressure. And, you know, was, you got to have your legs and be in good shape to be able to make good decisions with the basketball. We're in the middle of the season, so we just want to be able to play our best basketball from here on out. All right, so, so, so I got to ask, obviously a great win by Tech there, but if you let a player drop 38 on you, yeah. you chances you win the game yeah. out the window. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll leave that up to Trey, but I want to talk <laughs> about Tech for right now coming yeah. down the stretch. Seven out of nine, uh, like we said, there are only two losses to Smyrna and Dover, so maybe they're a tier below Dover and Smyrna right now, yeah. but these last uh -huh. few weeks of the season are really going to show us what Tech is all about going into the playoffs. Yeah. They've got William Penn, Dover again, and then Sally's, who's actually Sally's has had a pretty good team this year. It sounds like you're on the Tech train right now. I Brandon am Monster. on the Tech train. <laughs> the tech I think train. they have a chance to win a few games come the playoffs, yeah. but... Not, not to Dover or Smyrna's level. Yeah, right well, 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 Dover's on a level, uh -huh. Smyrna's on a level, mm -hmm. and then Tech's on a level. Okay. Just like he said in the first, uh, the first block, uh, Tech wildly inconsistent as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not expecting you to beat yeah, Dover, but I am lose expecting. Yeah, we saw them lose to CR by 40 and yeah, then beat them. I, I'm, I'm not expecting you to beat Dover, but I am expecting you to make the game competitive, mm -hmm. especially with the amount of seniors and the veterans they have on that team, and that has not happened. Uh, but, but for Bennett, uh, we, we've seen this. This is their story all year. Um, you know, I, I don't want to keep saying the word inconsistency, but mm -hmm. it's very inconsistent. And guys just get buckets on Bennett whenever they feel like it. <laughs> yeah. So I, that's, that's I, just I, me I being honest. I don't understand it. Yeah. For more on what else happened in the Henlopen Open this week, we're tossing back over to the wall to Drew. Thanks, Trey. We had a couple of great matchups flipping gears to the girls' side this week. And we'll start off in the crown jewel of the East Coast in Lewis, Delaware, with one of the best matchups in Delaware with Cape Henlopen hosting the Conrad Red Wolves. And both coming in at 12 and 3. The Vikings getting going early. Deanna Cannon, she's going to go everywhere she can to keep the dribble alive and dumps it off to Carlin Quinn for the easy bucket. Wolves answering back behind a nice drive from Julie Caleza as she gets the runner to fall. Cape up by three, headed into the break, but the second half. Vikings starting to catch fire. Check out this ball movement. Four different players touch the ball, and it's capped off by Morgan Mahoney to lay it in. And then this bucket here. This one pretty much ices the ball game. Abby Hearn, she's going to get the ball out on the left wing, drains the three on the step back, a game high 19 points for her as Cape sails past Conrad 58 to 53. And another girls side battle in this one yesterday in green one, Ursuline and Woodbridge, the Red Raiders on a run to end the first. First, it's Emily Rusidlo from downtown, then it's Ella Gordon as time expires on the first quarter. Ursuline finishes the quarter on a 14 to nothing run. They led 18 to nine, but Woodbridge battling right back. Shakaya Johnson going to kiss one off the glass. And then again, Johnson battling down in the paint. She led her team with eight in the first half. Second half, Sierra Smith with back to back triples. Woodbridge retakes the lead 21-20. And then how about the Blue Raiders on defense? Throwing a block party. Jillian Baker fired up after this defensive series, but this was all about the Red Raiders this evening. Check out this play. Ball goes straight to Rusidlo, the catch and shoot, and the bank is open, guys. She gets it in there. Ursuline wins 
48 to 39. So we'll send it back over to the desk for some more Delaware scores. Thanks, Drew. Before we wrap it up, we got to check out a couple of boys scores mm -hmm. from earlier this week in Delaware. Starting off, uh, Lake Forest, man, they, they were just in it. Just, I think it was they Monday, were. right? They we were talking about it just in the South. They get crushed yeah, by Yeah, we were CR. praising them last week. Uh, also, Delmar, who was in it a couple weeks ago, they are completely out. They lose to Seifert by one. Isn't that surprising, though? They lose by one to Seifert. You would think that Seifert would win that game by more, but yeah. Kate Penlopen, 58-52 winners over Polytech. Can and I get then a score Dover. check right there? Is that, is that right? Dover, 85-32. Right? I'm surprised guys. it ain't Dover more. Milford. <laughs> well, all right. Well, I, I do want to talk about the girls. I know Brandon Boston wants mm -hmm. to get in here. Can you talk about this Cape game here? Because yeah. it seems like all the experts had Conrad right. coming in there yeah. and completely wiping the floor with them. That's yeah. not what happened. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if the bus ride maybe had something to do <laughs> with it, making right. a, an hour a and point. a half long trip point. down yeah. to Lewis. But these were maybe two of the top girls, not maybe, these were two of the top girls teams, maybe the two top girls teams yeah. in yeah. Delaware. Cape came in 11-0 against Delaware teams. Uh, Conrad came in 9-0. Conrad won the championship just two years ago with a lot of these same players. So this was a really uh, a heavyweight matchup in the girls' division. Yeah. And now we see, hey, Kate beats them on their home turf. Let's see if they can beat them in the state tournament. But this really mm. legitimizes Kate Penlopen in terms of being uh, in the top tier in Delaware basketball. Yeah, I think you make a good point about the, uh, the, the driving distance. When teams get home games, we'll have to see what happens in the tournament. Mm -hmm. On the boys' side, yeah. you got to admire what Dover's doing. They continue to roll. They are easily going to win the Henlopen North. Yep. Uh, as far as the South goes, we still don't know who's going to win it. We still got Woodbridge. We still got Laurel. Laurel yeah. is one of the hottest teams play -in, game. in the state. Yes, we could see a play-in game. Uh, and that's going to be interesting yeah. if, if it's at a neutral site. Well, but Woodbridge doesn't want to go to Laurel. Anymore. Gentlemen, as we said, <laughs> one of the most exciting years when it comes to everything beneath the number one yes. high school basketball yes. in both Delaware and Maryland. We do have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll take a look at your weekend forecast with Chief Meteorologist Daniel Johnson. Uh, my name is Isaac Pettit from Southern Central Basketball, and you're watching Delmar Sports Insider.